Hey, what's up? If you like uh, if you like our videos, go ahead and uh, uh, subscribe and share them and hit that like button for me. Hey, everybody! It's Matt with Everwood Auto Repair. Today, what I'm going to talk to you about is the upsides of being a mobile mechanic. The first upside I'm going to talk about is you get to buy all these tools okay now if you watch my downsides my downside video you might remember that I one of the downsides that I complained about is having to buy all these tools well the upside is that you get to buy you don't have to buy all these tools you get to buy all these tools because if you're a mechanic you know there's a good chance like most guys they think it's cool when you have a power ratchet or an electric impact or the really nice ratchet or the nice this or the nice that, the big dog scan tool. People think that's cool. I've always thought that was cool. And now I can justify buying the, the $300 impact wrench, the $100 electric ratchet, the ratchets and, and screwdrivers and, and scan tools and all that stuff. So that's that's really cool and even though I'm using it for professional use obviously if my own vehicle ever breaks down it's really nice to have professional stuff on hand because everything just goes smoother another thing that's that really makes this job great is making my own schedule I I love being able to do what I want now there is a sense of responsibility that compels me to answer my phone and compels me to go out and work on cars and to help people. But something that I've started doing recently uh, is putting my phone on do not disturb. That way it doesn't ring or buzz or vibrate or anything. And the reason I did that is because I, I just get so many phone calls that it's really stressing me out. I turned my phone ringer back on for a couple days and uh, I didn't even have the ringer on. I just had it on vibrate and every time it vibrates I just about have a heart attack. So I'm going <laughs> So I'm going back I'm going back to do not disturb and I'll just call people back You know when I feel like uh, Something over the last two years that's really set me apart is the fact that I answer the phone and that I call people back But the truth is is I'm just I'm just over it man it's too stressful I'm the only one working I'm the only one working and until I hire somebody out I'm not just gonna keep taking all these calls I'll call back who I feel like calling back and I can do that because it's my own gig it's my own business I don't have to call anybody back I don't have to answer the phone I can do what I feel like doing and that's kind of the point of this video the or one of the points in this video Another upside is that I make pretty good money. Let's just talk uh, talk a quick second about money. I don't talk about this a lot because it's not really the main thing, okay? The main thing about this job is that it's really rewarding. Uh, people appreciate you and they and they are really happy. You look like a hero. It feeds my ego, you know? That's, that's a big part of it. But, there is something to be said about how much money I make. The job that I was doing before this, I was doing construction, and then before that, I worked in the Northwest logging. And uh, logging, I made 20 something dollars an hour, 40 to 60 hours a week, uh, you know, seven to a thousand, 700 to a thousand dollars a week. Uh, leaving that, I did construction for a couple months. I was making $500 a week if I got 40 hours. But if I didn't get 40 hours, I wasn't getting $500 a week. It was a lot less. And then what happened is that I I started doing this and I made $500 in two days. It was off of three jobs. Three jobs, I made $500. And I just looked at myself and I was like, Matt, that's what you made all last week. I never looked back. I haven't done, haven't even looked for a job or anything 
in uh, over two years now because it's a no-brainer. I went from making 500 to, you know, $700 a week for years, that's what I made. 500 to maybe a thousand if I was having a really good week. Right now, a really bad week, I, I take home a thousand dollars on a really bad week. The uh, the best week I've ever had, um, I think it was like $3,000 profit in a week. But, but you know, it's I don't really count it by the week because it doesn't really, doesn't work like that. The be the beginning of the month and the very end of the month can usually be slower. And then you have two weeks, two and a half weeks maybe of really busy, uh, a really busy time. What I usually make on average is like six to seven thousand dollars in a month. January and February are particularly slow for the last couple of years, but on average, six to seven thousand dollars. Now let's talk about March. This past March, uh, it was closer to nine thousand dollars because everybody got stimulus checks, and so there's this outside thing. It's a outside stimulus. You know, there's this outside thing that is altering the flow of work. Just like last year, you know, the the whole lockdown thing caused a big shift in business for about five weeks. It got dead for me. It got dead. And then this year, the opposite. It got really busy. I mean, to the point where, like I was saying, I had to shut my I had to shut my uh, ringer off, put it on do not disturb, so it doesn't even vibrate. So the money. That's a big upside. I went from making five to seven hundred dollars a week to making a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars on a regular week. That's a normal week. It's really changed my life, no doubt, because I've gone through all these different jobs. And look, see, I didn't, I didn't put my phone on do not disturb, and now people are sitting here calling me. So. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that after I get done making this video. It really changed my life doing this job. For years, for years, I went job to job, company to company, looking for a spot where I could fit in and be loyal and and uh, really be a company man. I always wanted to be a company man, working for a pool company. That was that was something I did for a couple years. I was a pool man, uh, and then as a logger. I wanted nothing more in the world than to find a company to be loyal for, uh, loyal to, and even even whenever I took a big cut, a pay cut, leaving logging, going to construction for a couple months, I didn't even like that guy. I didn't like that company. I didn't like the boss. But you know what? I wanted to be a good employee. I wanted to show myself that I could succeed and fit in somewhere. Well, it didn't really work out. <laughs> kind of unemployable. And that's okay. That's okay because if I had stuck doing logging or construction or pool man, I would never have come into this because ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to find, I wanted to start my own company. Me and my dad, we'd always talk about that. And that's what this has allowed me to do. Low overhead, okay? Let's move on to the next point. The low overhead of this job makes the barrier of entry very low, okay? Because the way what I started with were basic tools that most men should just have anyways. It was the 250 piece Husky set from uh, tool set from Home Depot. I started with that and that got me by for a while. And, and to all the way up for almost two years, all the way up until my stuff got stolen a few months ago. So I started with very basic tools, very limited knowledge, okay? I, yeah, I had changed brakes before, like twice. I had done oil changes a couple times. That's it. I had changed the shock on my uh, F-150 a few years ago, one time, one shock, and it was, I had to have help. I had to have a lot of help. And so this low barrier of entry, you know, cause you just, you start off with small amount of tools and you make it work. You move on uh, and you start with easy jobs that require a small amount of tools. And then you kinda, you move on to a little bit more complicated job. 
and you discover, oh crap, I need this tool. So you go out and you buy that tool and it gets you by. And then this, the process just happens. You come upon a problem, you learn how to fix it, you discover a new tool that you might need and you buy it. And your tool collection grows and your knowledge grows, your, you know, your, your mental toolbox grows as, as the jobs come in and as you see new things. And the fact that all I needed was some tools, a cell phone, and a car, that's, I mean, that's the American dream. What else can I do? What else can I, hey, if you've got an idea, guys, for something really low overhead that I can do, let me know, because I'm open. Like, for real, if there's something else where I can get in for, you know, under a couple grand, total cost under a couple grand we're talking i was driving a 500 dollars car and a freaking a freaking 500 in tools not even 500 in tools when i first started so that's a big upside the the low overhead being able to start your own business okay if if uh if that's what you want to do you know it's not for everybody but for people that it's for like like me it's not even an option it's not even a choice. I can't go and work for somebody. How could I? How can I go from, uh, you know, I was just saying I made uh, make six to $7,000 a month, made $9,000 last month, and we're growing. We're growing. So how can I go from this, this capless, this, this endless possibility of being a, a, an independent mobile mechanic how could I go from from the limitlessness, the limitlessness of this job, to 40 hours a week? You know, you'll make a thousand if you're lucky, and that's it. The next thing that makes this job really great is is I'm always seeing new places. I I never like I don't have this routine of. I go to this one place every day, or I go, like when I was a pool man, I had a route. So I'd see these 100 pools throughout five days, and <laughs> and it gets boring. You know what I mean? It gets boring. You're driving the same places, you see the same pools. And, and with this job, I drive all over the city. It's very rare that I'm doing the same job twice. I mean, I've been doing this for two years, and most of the jobs that I do, even to this day, if somebody calls me to do something, I've probably never done it before. Now, that's not because I haven't been working my butt off for the last two years, bro. We've got probably, okay, so there's 700 days, a little over 700 days over the course of two years. I probably have over a thousand customers that I've helped over the last two years. If I had to make a, a, an estimate, I would say over a thousand customers. And and even with that many customers, we're still doing new stuff every single day, seeing cars that I've never seen before, like never worked on before, all the time. And that's, that's really, it keeps it fresh, keeps it interesting, and it sets us apart, okay? The fact that I'm, I'm not locked into like this pattern rec this pattern recognition of I only work on you know BMWs and this is what always goes wrong with BMWs and I see this one problem all the time and I work on this one car all the time no I work on all the different kinds of cars and it keeps my mind open to different possibilities and forces me to go through you know a diagnostic you know, procedure. Actually try and figure out what the problem is instead of just throwing parts at it. Because that's kind of what most people do is just take a guess, install a part, and then block the customer. That's what most people do. The the next upside to this job, there's a lot of upsides. This is really this is really easy. Like uh, the the last video the downsides i was i was stopping the video after every every point trying to trying to make it trying to remember like what what was the next downside what's what what are the cons of this job no not with the pros because it's easy you know the the next upside is 
my customers. I love my customers. Not all of them, but most of them. Most of my customers are great. They are really understanding if I make a mistake. They're really understanding with scheduling. They they don't give me any guff about pricing. They they pay on time. They don't rip me off. They appreciate my work. They tell me they appreciate my work. They tell me that I'm so happy that you were able to come out. I really appreciate you coming out, you know, this late or fixing this thing that nobody else could fix or whatever it is, whatever I'm doing for them, my customers, they are so appreciative and it's great, okay? Well, let's talk about being a pool man again. I did that for a couple years, okay? They're the most ungrateful bunch I've ever met. I've never met anybody so ungrateful as a as a really clean, the owner of a really clean pool. You know, they, they're so uh, disgruntled most of the time, especially the ones that have really clean pools because they're like, why are you only spending three minutes in my backyard? You know, I'm gonna call the boss and complain because you're not, you're, you're working too fast. My pool's too clean. And, and with this job, it's not like that. They want me in and out as fast as I can possibly do it. If I can come in and, and be in and out for, uh, you know, in five minutes, most people are going to be cool. Even it, even though it's 150 bucks and it only took, you know, maybe I just had to tighten the battery up or give you a jump start. Even if it's something really simple like that, most people are really appreciative. You do get people who are like, ugh, that, that only took 30 seconds. I can't believe, like, can I just give you 20 for gas? No, you can't just give me 20 for gas, fool. You gotta get, you gotta give me that 150, okay? That's what you agree to. <laughs> Man, uh, that hasn't happened in a while, but I can think of the last guy. I can, I remember that last guy. You, you haven't left my brain, sir. The next upside is that Another upside is that I get to bring my dog everywhere with me. Come here, Nim. Come here. So, come here. So, I since I was like 15 or 16, I've been bringing my dog with me everywhere. Okay, go ahead and lay down. I've been bringing my dog with me everywhere. He was, he. I would tie, I used to have this pit bull named Big Snug. I tie her up outside of the corner store when I go to get snacks. She went with me everywhere, off leash, all the time and I always wanted a job where you could do that you know like as a logger sometimes people will bring their dogs in the woods but you basically have to be the owner and you have to really train the dog otherwise like dogs get killed sometimes out in the woods or as a pool man I, you couldn't really bring a dog you're working for this big company you, you know your trucks sitting outside of people's houses in the heat all day but or, or what about this? What if you're a mechanic at a shop, you know, or you work at a dealer? Are you gonna be bringing your dog with you? No, not really. So it's really cool, you know, and people think, oh, you bring him because he, he guards your stuff. No, not really, he's just kind of my buddy. He's kind of my buddy. Chicks think he's cute whenever I'm going through the drive-thru, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so there you have it, guys. I hope that this video helps you decide if being a mobile mechanic is something that you want to do if you're already a mobile mechanic do me a favor and leave some some upsides to being a mobile mechanic in the comments below tell me why you're a mechanic tell me why this is the job for you if you're not a mechanic but you're thinking about it leave a comment down below let me know what makes you want to be a mechanic if you're not if you're just watching this video for fun let me know because i want to know like why you'd be watching this video if you didn't want to understand or if you didn't want to be a mechanic i don't you know I, i'm curious go ahead and subscribe like the video keep an eye up the hill guys
I was that kind of kid who had his dog like tied up outside the corner store when I go to get snacks or whatever. My dog has gone with me. You like this dog? Jim, come. Come here. He's growling at the neighbor.